Hello, and welcome to Church of the Oaks for our normal Sunday morning message. Some of you may be surprised to see me up here again instead of our minister, Patrick Michael McCarty, but like he's been doing for the last month, he was very heavily involved in the renovation of our Rose Cottage that we are starting on this very day, August 1st. You notice I'm taping this on Saturday. You may be watching this on Sunday. But he's been busy until now and will continue for another few days to get the place ready for COTS, Committee on the Shelter List, to help home some folks who haven't had a home in a while. So I agreed to step in for him again. But in the off chance that some of our congregants who normally watch this YouTube video will be sharing it with family, friends, acquaintances, I want to introduce me a little better than I have so far. I am Wayne Thush. I am the moderator of the Board of Directors here at Church of the Oaks. And I'm going to give you some opinions and some thoughts that are purely my own opinions and my own thoughts and do not represent an official position of Church of the Oaks. I'll have to admit that when Patrick asked me to fill in for him today, that I had no idea what I would talk about when I agreed to do so. And until last Thursday afternoon when my wife Nancy and I decided to take our 20 minute afternoon walk, I didn't have a clue. But then we went out to Sonoma State University. Some of you may have been to the lake with a little island and picnic tables, lots of ducks and geese on the campus at Sonoma State. And it's a very idyllic setting. It's a beautiful place to be for a peaceful respite. But there's also something else that you can do and learn there. While you are filled with a peaceful serenity, you can be reminded of the chaos and troubles that other folks around the world and here in the US have experienced. As Nancy continued around the lake, I paused once again, as I've done before, to reflect on the messages that are part of the Holocaust and Genocide Memorial Grove at Sonoma State University. This grove was designed to honor survivors and victims of genocides and holocausts. Specifically, they include the Jewish Holocaust, the Armenian Genocide, the Cambodian Genocide, the Rwandan Genocide, the Genocide in Darfur, and the Native American Genocide. That's way too many genocides, and that probably doesn't even mention them all. The two that I am most familiar with are the Jewish Holocaust and the Native American Genocide. I recognize how both the Jews and the American Indians suffered greatly from the atrocities committed against them. Yet, I find it reassuring to realize that Jewish culture and religion have since then not only survived, but prospered. And while our American forefathers did everything they could to eliminate the Native American population, the American Indians now have recovered to such an extent that many tribes are now quite wealthy and even wield extensive political power. Well, that's not true in many reservations, but that is true in certain places around the country. So strides have been made. Now during World War II, our federal government in our name took away the freedom and property of American citizens of Japanese descent for fear of sabotage. I used to wonder why it was that we did not take away the freedom and property of German Americans or Italian Americans at the same time, because after all, they were in that same world war as our enemies. But we only treated our Japanese American citizens that way. I don't really wonder about that anymore. At least our government has formally apologized for those illegal actions against Japanese Americans and has actually paid some reparations to those affected families. And of course, we had to fight a long civil war to eliminate slavery in our country and then 
we had to overcome generations of discrimination against blacks so that African Americans now are experiencing some great successes in our country, even gaining the White House for two years, or for two terms, excuse me, eight years. Yet, even now, we're finally realizing that our black brothers and sisters continue to be discriminated against and are at serious risk of death at the hands of some police who suffer from implicit bias. And oh, by the way, our government, in our names, is still separating non-documented immigrant families from their children at our southern border, keeping all those children in cages. Their crimes? Escaping from poverty, sickness, and fear of death in their home countries, and trying to gain entry into what was once the land of freedom and opportunity, and may become that again. When I think about these histories of the Native Americans, the Japanese Americans, the Black Americans, the South and Central Americans who want to become North Americans, and the Jewish people, I'm reminded about the need for and the value of the following characteristics of people who want to get ahead in the world. Resilience, persistence, strength of character, vision, perseverance, faith, and community. These character, characteristics have been well used by those who have suffered and overcome the nastiness that the rest of us have heaped upon them. No, I don't take on personal guilt for the sins of those who came before me, and neither should you. But I do feel responsible for any continuation of those sins by me and my fellow Americans. In addition to honoring past victims of Holocaust and genocide, the Memorial Garden at Sonoma State recognizes educators, scholars, and activists who are working for awareness, tolerance, and human rights. To me, an activist is anyone who speaks out against injustice or who financially supports humanitarian crusades or who joins in with other protesters on the streets of America. I have become more activist in recent years and months as I watch what is happening in our country. I have supported and continue to support the March for Our Lives organization. Many of us forget what that's all about. It was only a few years ago when the students led an organization that is working on reducing gun violence in America because of all the violence perpetrated against school children in our country in recent years. I am currently supporting the Black Lives Matter efforts to create more justice for all. And I continue to support the Jimmy Carter Habitat for Humanity and other charitable causes that the Carter family is involved in. And now I feel the need to speak out against what I consider to be the most dangerous time that our American Republic has ever faced. And we have faced some real doozies. I am amazed that this once great country of ours cannot do what other countries seem to be able to do, properly protect their citizens from the ravages of the current pandemic with a national effort. I am appalled by our federal government using uninvited unidentified armed federal troops in Portland to quell legitimate protests. Those pictures on TV reminded me way too much of the use of stormtroopers in Nazi Germany in the 1930s. I am actually ashamed of our U.S. Senate as they take this weekend for a holiday instead of working on legislation to help those millions of us who are in danger of losing their extra unemployment benefits or who may be about to be evicted or foreclosed upon. And I am absolutely outraged at the attempts of our leader to violate the Constitution of the United States of America in so many areas 
not the least of which is to hinder, delay, or cancel the right of Americans to vote on November 3rd. So I say to you, vote as if the future of our democracy depends on us. I believe it truly does. In closing, I have a challenge to offer you and me. You've heard us say here at Church of the Oaks that when you become a member, we only ask of you a few things, one thing really, to share your time, your four T's, your time, your talent, your thought, and your treasure, not just with Church of the Oaks, but with the greater community around you. Well, now our greater community of the United States is in dire need of all of our four T's. Please think about what is going on in our country today and decide how and where you can apply your particular talents for the betterment of us all and how much time you can devote to a cause that is important to you and how much of your treasure you are willing to share in order to preserve and protect a more perfect union. Have Americans in the past risen to the occasion to overthrow injustice? Yes, we have. Do we have the will to create a better society? Yes, we do. Will we do everything we can to create a we consciousness in our country and in our world? I say yes, we will. Namaste.